Greetings and citations, film fans. Welcome to AMC Movie Talk, movie talk for movie fans for this Friday, January the 11th, 2013. As always, I am your host. My name is John Campy, a senior editor of AMC Movie News. Joining me today, all the way across town, he is the director of the upcoming film, The ABCs of Death, Mr. John Schnepp. John, how you doing? Hey, what's going on? And, uh, hey, listen, folks. Uh, the other day, the Oscar nominations came out. And there were some glaring, glaring snubs. And I thought we would take some time today for John and I to talk about what we consider to be the top five worst Oscar snubs. Uh, now, we're probably going to limit it to like the last 20 years because we're not going to go all the way back to the 40s or anything like that. Um, now, before I go any further, though, I want to mention this. I do think the word snub is used way too liberally by a lot of people. I think because every year you hear 10 people throwing out 20 snubs. See, to me, a snub is egregious, like a clearly this has been wrongfully excluded from either being a nominated or be winning, depending on the case. I don't actually think there have been all that many snubs in Oscar history. I, I love the Oscars. I actually really do appreciate the system they have in place. No system is perfect, but there have been a few really, really horrible, horrible, what I would consider snubs over the years. And we really want to hear what you think and what you think have been horrible snubs. But to get the conversation started, I thought we would go first. So, John, why don't you give us, uh, say, give me your three. Give me three snubs and save your top two worst snubs for a little bit later. But give me three of your okay. snubs right now. All right. I, I will say uh, 2008. The Dark Knight. I think that should have uh, won the top, the best picture because that was my favorite movie. So since these are, you know, our opinions, that's my opinion. Um, now, that was a year uh, that it, there weren't 10 nominees, if I'm not mistaken. I think that was the year before. Yes. They had ten, so there were only five, and yeah, it didn't get nominated. <clears throat> yeah, and the that whole 10 nominee thing was goofy anyway, so I'm glad they got rid of it. Um, they could, I, I don't know. I, I mean, I know they gave... Uh, Heath Ledger, a posthumous award as the Joker, but that whole movie, if if you just took away the superhero element, was a really amazingly well put together crime film. So, uh, and it was uh, engaging and a, a great, a really great cinematic uh, film for me. So that's that that's my uh, 2008, The Dark Knight, and uh, time traveling to 2003. I say X2 should have won the Oscar. I'm gonna wow. I'm gonna obviously stick with. Uh, superhero and sci-fi stuff i was just traveling doing some time travel and i was like looking at movies of sci-fi uh, superhero films uh, science fiction films 2003 looking at a bunch of films that came out x2 popped up i was like i remember coming out of that movie theater and hanging out with a bunch of my friends right outside of the movie theater after we saw x2 and talking for about 35 minutes like just full geeked out amazed at how great it was uh for especially in for 2003, like that was uh, right around when they just started to get superhero films right, and we could thank Brian Singer for that. He really nailed it. So. Yeah, as a matter of fact, up until Avengers came out, I actually, even more so than The Dark Knight, I have always said that to me, the best comic book movie they've ever made is X Men 2. Until Avengers came out, I've yeah. always thought the best one they've ever done was X Men 2. I love that movie. Fully agree. It should have won that Oscar, yo. So those <laughs> are my top my first two. And your third? Uh, um, I was going to go with uh, District 9, 2009. It did get nominated, uh, that, though. It did get the nomination. For Oscar? Yeah, it got nominated for uh, for Best Picture. Wow. I think it should have won. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Not just uh, That's a snub to me that it didn't win. Right. So, All right. Um, let me give really? a couple. Let me give a couple sure. here. Then we'll get to your top two. I'm going to give off three myself. Uh in no particular order, except these are my bottom three, and then I'll go into my top two in a second. I'll, yeah. I got to go all the way back to yesterday. <laughs> ben Affleck not getting nominated for Best Director. Now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you he should have won. I think I may have voted for him to win. But I, 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 I told the story yesterday. When I spoke with Ben Affleck right after seeing um, Argo, I got together with Ben Affleck and I talked to him and I said, Ben, if you do not get nominated for Best Director for this, because he didn't get nominated for Best Director for The Town, and he should have, 
He should have been nominated for Best Director for Gone Baby Gone, and he didn't. So I said, if you don't get nominated for this dude, I am going to slash somebody's tires. Well, he didn't get nominated. And last night at the Critics' Choice Awards, he won Best Director. He didn't just get nominated. He won Best Director, won Best Picture for Argo, and he's not even nominated for Best Director at the Oscars. To me, that is a huge, huge snub. Um, another one, my second one that I'm going to mention here, a lot of people will roll their eyes at me, but listen to me clearly here for a second. I think this is the perfect example of snub. Phantom Menace not winning Best Visual Effects the year it came out, total, you can't, you can't disguise that. That was a complete snub. Now, a lot of people will say to me, oh, of course it didn't win. Matrix was a way better movie. I'm not talking about what was the better movie. I'm saying just for the category, best visual effects, which movie has, you talk to anybody who works in the visual effects industry. And at the time I was working in the visual effects industry and I had guys working with all these different places, digital domain and computer cafe and other places around like friends of mine who just kept going back to watch Phantom Menace over and over and over again, not because it was good, which it wasn't, but because they, it just, they had never seen anything like this before. It was remarkable visually what they did. Now, you may not be a fan of George Lucas's decision to use so much computer graphics. That's fine. I'm kind of with you on that. But that doesn't take away from the fact that what they were doing, what Industrial Light and Magic was doing with visual effects was bang, mind blowing. All right. The third one I'm going to mention here um, is kind of a bunch into one. Wally, -E, Ratatouille, The Incredibles, Finding Nemo, all of them. Number one critically rated films of their respective years. Let me say that again. Wally, -E, Ratatouille, The Incredibles, Finding Nemo. All of them were the number one critically rated films of their year. None of them nominated for Best Picture. Because there's this weird moron wall in a lot of Oscar voters' heads. Separating, oh, an animated film can't be considered Best Picture. If it's the best movie, it's the best movie. And those were amongst the best movies, and they weren't there. So I'll get to my top two in a second here. I'm going to throw it over to Schnepp again for his what he considers to be the top two snubs. So go ahead, John. What else you got on your list there? Well, you mentioned Matrix uh, a little bit earlier. I think Matrix, the 1999 original Matrix, should have been not only nominated for Best Picture, but won the Oscar. Because... That, to me, was the uh, stepping-off point for science fiction and uh, science fantasy in films. To, to go to that next level was The Matrix. It took everything that we enjoyed when I was a lot younger, like Star Wars and these other kinds of, uh, of science fiction films, and then brought it right into a, an adult level, you right know, at the right age for me, too. I think a lot of people now, they, they taint their view of that original Matrix because... The more fresh memory was Matrix 2, which I actually kind of, I liked the second Matrix film, not as much as the mm -hmm. first one. And then the third one, which I think most of us didn't like. But I right. think that makes us, we forget how good and original and awe-inspiring that first Matrix was. I mean, it was remarkable. It, it was incredible. I, I, I had a weird gut feeling, and I remember buying two tickets, the op opening night of Matrix, the Matrix, and I was like, I'm just going to see this twice because I know it's going to be that good. And I was blown away, and then I remember coming out the first time and like, just jacked up, jumping around, and seeing the entire, you know, people standing in line. I was like, you're not going to believe what you're about to see. You know, it was a <laughs> very exciting moment of cinema for myself. And uh, honestly, the, the the sequels did ruin the first movie for me. I remember selling The Matrix along with uh, the second one because I, I really was like, bummed out about the way they chose to end their, uh, their trilogy. But... Uh, yeah, last year I bought the Blu-ray back of The Matrix. And, and to me, it's like, hey, they just made one movie, and I'm happy with that. I don't have to think about the other two. That movie on its own, you could watch it right now. If you don't ever watch the second and the third one, that's going to be one of your favorite movies you'll ever see. Because it's an incredible film, an incredible screenplay, incredibly directed, great acting, amazing special effects. Should have won the Oscar. Um. My uh, number one is a tie between 1977 and 1981, and those are Star Wars and Raiders of the Lost Ark. Wow, so for yeah. me, I'm like, both of those movies should have won the Oscar. And <clears throat> it's not just because looking back and, and seeing how much they've influenced our entire culture, but uh, 
when they came out at the time, they were two of the most entertaining films that year. Right. Across the board, family entertainment and amazingly well done craft, script, audience. It's like all those things are what Oscar and, you know, great. Hey, I mean, it didn't have a bunch of stars in it at the time. Uh, Raiders had Harrison Ford, who was only really kind of known as Han Solo. Star Wars had Alec Guinness. Yeah. Uh, uh, Peter Cushing, a hammer horror guy. It wasn't really like loaded with top stars as, as the way people think of stars now. But uh, it launched the careers of, of a lot of people. And I'm just talking about like it is in history. But when it came out, it should have won. That's how I feel about it. it yeah. Like especially as an adult now thinking back like, wow, those are some serious snubs that they didn't get nominated as a best picture, first of all. I think Star Wars secondly, did. I think Star Wars did get nominated for best picture, if I'm not mistaken. But it didn't All right, win. Well, I'm, I'm going to check online right when you, as you're rocking yours. But okay. those are my, my, that's my tie. So I'll see All if right. I'm wrong. So here are my, my two. Um, I, I disagree with you, but I'm one of those people who I didn't think Dark Knight should have been nominated for Best Picture. I mean, I loved it. I really loved it. But I, I didn't think. But Christopher Nolan not getting nominated for Best Director for Inception? That's pure insanity. Yeah, that's like that, I, I will continue. Look, I don't think Inception is his best movie, but I think it is his best directed movie. When you actually sit back and you figure out everything that goes into this film and keeping that, that is a movie concept that could fly apart into a million pieces at any second. But he keeps that whole thing together with narrative, compelling characters. He's co totally conscious of which way the story's going and how he's going to get it there. And he just has the right elements here and there to glue it all together without it feeling contrived and, and yet being entertaining at the same time. It, I think it's his best directorial effort. And I just, I'm floored. I, to this day, I am completely floored that he did not get a Best Director nomination for that. It's ridiculous. I, I, I can't even imagine why, what was going through head. Like, with The Phantom Menace not winning Best Visual Effects, Hollywood hates George Lucas because George Lucas hates Hollywood. I get it, but so they snubbed him. They purposely did it, and they didn't care how they dressed it up. But Hollywood doesn't hate Christopher Nolan. So I, I, I mean, I, so I don't get it. Why did they not, not get nominated? Um, but my number one... Greatest snub. Now, most of my snubs have been films that weren't even nominated. This one was nominated, but it did not win Best Picture. And to me, it is still the all-time biggest travesty of the Oscars. Shawshank Redemption did not win Best Picture of its year. It lost to Forrest Gump, which is, hey, a really good movie. But you look at any top 50 films of all time list. Look at any of them. You'll find Shawshank Redemption on all of them. Probably a lot of them in the top 15. You're not going to find Forrest Gump there. And, and that's, that's, not a, that's not a slight on Forrest Gump or the job they did with that film. It's a wonderful film. But it's not in the greatest motion pictures of all time conversation. And you got to have Shawshank Redemption in any conversation about what are some of the greatest movies ever made. And, you know, like I said, history vindicates. Look at any top 10, top 20, top 30 list. You're going to find Shawshank Redemption there more times than not. You're not going to see Forrest Gump there. So to me, my number one snub all time, Shawshank Redemption not winning Best Picture. So that's uh, that's mine. I don't know. Like, I'm going to assume you've seen Shawshank Redemption, John. Oh yeah, of course. I was I was going to as a side note, I was going to add that Pulp Fiction is to me my Shawshank, which came out that same year and also got snubbed. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot that was the same year. By Pulp Forrest Fiction. Gump. It's like <clears throat> honestly, like it's it's weird. Forrest Gump. I mean, all I really remember about that film right now is their ad campaign, a box full of chocolates, you know, or whatever. That <laughs> eek a burg a burg a box full of chocolates. Or I can't even really remember it. I did, and I saw it. I mean, I remember. Like it didn't stick in my brain. If I really thought about it, and maybe for like ten minutes, and it came back, and I'd be like, "All right, now I'd remember." I'd have to, without jogging my memory by going onto the internet, if I had to just think, think about it, I it would slowly come to the surface. But I remember I mean, for me, Pulp Fiction. I remember life mind. is like a box of chocolates. Run, Forest, run. And that really, at the time, extremely cool visual effect of Gary Sinise without one of his legs or both of his legs. I can't even remember now if he was only missing one or two. That's how yeah. memorable it is. But I can tell you yeah. every line from Shawshank Redemption, man. I can tell you every line from Shawshank Redemption. 
But uh, hey, listen, folks, just I want to let you guys know, in case you don't know and you should know, every year, AMC Theaters, right before the Oscars, has this special event called the Best Picture Showcase, where we take one or two days and we play all the movies nominated for Best Picture. This year, all the nominated, there's nine films nominated for Best Picture this year. The nine films are Zero Dark Thirty, Silver Linings Playbook, Lincoln, Les Miserables, Life of Pi, Amore, Django Unchained, Argo, which as I mentioned won Best Picture last night at the Critics' Choice Awards, and Beasts of the Southern Wild. Uh, for like one ticket price, you can watch all these films. It's amazing. Go to amctheaters.com slash BPS. So that's short for Best, Best Picture Showcase. amctheaters.com slash BPS. And listen, folks, while you're at it, take a second and click subscribe. Become a subscriber to our AMC Movie News YouTube channel. It'll keep you up to date on everything going on in the world of movie news, our editorials, and, of course, our daily AMC Movie Talk podcast. And listen, you can find us as well on, on iTunes now, as a matter of fact. Just uh, open up iTunes. Look for AMC Movie Talk. You'll find us there both in audio and video. Find us on Stitcher. Find us on your Roku box. And your set. Watch us on your television with your Apple TV or your Roku box. You can find us on there, uh, and that'll be it. So listen, that'll do it for us for now. We'll be back on Monday to talk about all the movie news going on in the world today. I want to thank, as always, Mr. John Schnepp for joining us. John, thanks for being here. Hey, thanks a lot. I'll see you soon. And thank you guys for joining us. Once again, click that subscribe button. Until next time, my name's John Campia for AMC Movie News. Bye-bye.